Hey everybody, it's Nerger Time. Thank you for joining us once again for Ring of Honor Resurrected. We are back for our first episode, episode one for real. Episode zero came out like yesterday. Uh, and if you watch that, it was pretty much a setup video. It was a long one. I think it was like 40 minutes <clears throat> where we were setting up the game. Uh, we're ready for our first show. We have one in two days. Going to be on HBO Max. We do. We are waiting for a couple contracts to come back in just to seal the deal. Uh, the Tate brothers, the boys coming back in for Dalton. Um, but other than that, we're pretty much set up with 42 wrestlers. I want a few more. I'm hoping that AEW sends us some. Uh, because it would be kind of interesting to see who uh, they decide to send our way. In some of the the saves I've simmed for this, sometimes they send me like 20, sometimes they never do. So it's some it's a really weird one uh, that we'll have to kind of play it by ear to see what they decide uh, to do. Now, we did talk about doing a tournament before the start of this, and that specifically is the Top Prospect Tournament. Winner of this tournament, an eight-man tournament, gets a shot at any Ring of Honor title that they wish. So uh, an interesting stipulation could really slingshot someone into an important and prestigious main event. We do have our first pay-per-view of this new era, Resurrection, in 24 days. Um, and this tournament of the eight competitors here, uh, again, a small tournament, but um, an important one. So we have Wheeler Yuta, currently is the pure champion. Um, so obviously he would not be able to compete for the pure champion if he uh, won, but he could use that to, be, to go for the world title. The television title, technically the tag title, if he had a team that he wanted to use it with. Versus Eli Isom, a blue chipper um, who is making waves. We have Lee Moriarty uh, versus Hot Sauce Tracy Williams. We got Daniel Garcia versus Josh Woods. And we got Dalton Castle versus his tag team partner, Joe Hender. So we could see some potential tension all over the potential really interesting matchups, depending on how it shakes up. Um, and for several people, a really fascinating final um, if they are able to win and then challenge for a major title. So very cool start of our Ring of Honor save. What else is crazy, though? Let's go to the world. Because to, what the hell happened? I don't know what the hell happened here. But WWE has decided to go to war with AEW. Openly told that if they take work with their rivals, they won't be welcome in the company anymore. Um, the war has begun. They've declared it. And <laughs> it's like... This is like a Ukraine situation because it's just apparently everybody else decided at the same time. Okay, uh, MLW going to war. New Japan is considered at war with WWE. AEW is considered at war. Um, MLW at war. So everything is, is popping off in the world and little old Ring of Honor sitting here watching the great powers duke it out what the hell is going to happen we don't know uh it is crazy town here also apparently uh adam share uh got uh engaged so holy hell um also the pay-per-view company match fighter is getting smacked down somehow uh so that's interesting craziness <laughs> um, a lot going on there, but boy, uh, hopefully it doesn't affect us. Let's go ahead and let's sim on over to our first Ring of Honor show. We do have some negotiations. Hopefully it's our contracts all coming in. We had to give everybody, for the most part, new contracts because they were all expiring. Um... Most of them got a one-year contract. A few of them only got a three-month contract because we're going to re look at whether we want to keep them around or not. Um, like Gresham, I think, kept for two 
or one year. I think it was a two year contract. The Briscoes, I think we gave him a one year contract. Um, but yeah, let's see. It was a two year contract. Um, but some some of them are three month. You know, just so that we can re review it. We don't know if we're going to keep them around. We're going to move to something else. It depends on what's going on. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, apparently, the Ring of Honor World Six Man Tag Champions uh, changed hands at AEW last night. They decided to crown a six man tag team championship uh, with us here, and they decided to uh, make it the Elite. So Adam Cole and the Young Bucks um, won the Ring of Honor World Six Man Tag Champions. Uh, that's 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 a hell of a, a crowning. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to use them. One thing I realized with our show is we may want to pre-tape it. Um, actually, it might not matter. It might actually this might actually be the best time for it. I was going to say because we're going to run into conflict with Rampage, but they actually record it beforehand. I think right. They I think they record it on Wednesday, so we can look at our event availability. See who's available. Um, the Suzuki has some limited availability sometimes, but it looks like Friday we are free and clear every week for everybody. Um, so that's great. So that means if we wanted to, we could bring Adam Cole in now. You know, we have our alliance champions is the elite, the undisputed elite are our six-man tag champions. If we wanted to have them in a match, um, this is the great, this is a great reason, by the way, if you're ever simming one of these things and you're like, I want to play around with this system, you know, Adam Cole, if I were to try to negotiate, get a talent trade, you know, you can do a talent trade, but it it's just, it's annoying, right? If you wanted to propose an alliance loan, you only get so many of these two. It's like only so many a quarter and you only can do it for one show. Um, it can work, but it's it's very cumbersome. With with the alliance title, you can just on that night if they're available, you just pay their admin fee. And as far as I know, you can do it as many times as you want. So for as long as these guys are the Ring of Honor tag champions, I can just bring Adam Cole onto the show. Um, so that's super helpful. Obviously, uh, Wheeler is still our pure champion. Uh, but that could change as well. So, you know, CM Punk could become the pure champion, and then all of a sudden you got you got crazy town. You don't know, you don't know. So very interesting um turn of events there. Uh that's exciting. I don't know if that's gonna affect our first show, but uh definitely wanted to bring that up. We still have to do a little bit more simming, so let's go ahead and keep moving over to our uh our first show. All right, so as we sim ahead, we still have some crazy stuff going on in the world here. Um, a lot of retirements. Gangrel retiring, which makes sense. Tony Schiavone deciding to retire at 64. No longer going to be the voice of AEW. So is Eric Bischoff at 66 deciding that he's leaving the business. Um, some some crazy stuff going on there. Um, also some weird happenings going on. Dark Order got disbanded. The Pinnacle lost just Cash Wheeler. <laughs> um, Death Triangle will no longer feature Ray Phoenix and then ended. Um, Inner Circle gone. A lot of weird stuff going on in AEW. Um, I see some some contracts going on here that I don't think I signed for. So I, what, I don't know what this is. Okay, no, we... The rest of our contracts are in. That's good. Um, so very interesting, very weird things going on over in our uh, our parent company. All right. We got a Ring of Honor show. Um, we set our cost at free. So I don't know what our first show is going to be in terms of audience, but we're hoping for at least a few hundred. You know, we're expecting something like an NXT show. So it doesn't need to be huge, but we want an audience. Uh, we want as many faces as we can. I am curious to see also what we're going to get from our on-demand deal from HBO. 
um, because we are going to get like 30%, I think, of our revenue from it. So that potentially could be pretty substantial. Um, we'll have to see. <clears throat> All right, we are auto-booked in the mid-Atlantic, um, and that's fine. I don't really have any desire to be moving around. We are going to start targeting other areas, and we'll have to look at our spill later because we do need to get four um, areas at 40 or higher. So we're going to have to look at uh, what our spillover is and, and how much effort we, how much effect we can have on it. Um, we have an incident involving Bandito. Uh, apparently he organized a video game tournament and then it looks like, uh, oh boy, tell me Minoru Suzuki with a language barrier is running wrestler's court. And he is. Uh, Josh Woods brought over to Minoru Suzuki and told uh, he is guilty for being an hour late. Um, and of course, yes, and now pay for it a travel partner's meals for the next three shows. What a terrifying judge to have to deal with. I bet you had a positive impact. I bet you don't want to talk to Minoru Suzuki. Holy hell. Um, no negative stances. What we want is to try to get some better relationships. We have some pretty good ones, and we're probably at 100 right now. But we would like some um, some potential protégés. Now, um, something like a, a William Regal. I don't think we can pick because we are. Um, but, you know, we, we want to find somebody that has a high chance of succeeding, creating a friendship. Bad. Let's try that. Tracy Williams and Danny Garcia uh, might not be a bad idea. Red Death and Hot Sauce. Be Red Hot Sauce. No effect this time. Uh, but trying to produce any of those protégés, any of those friendships, are generally going to be a benefit to us. We're going to be in the Mid-Atlantic. We're expecting 338 fans. That's pretty good. Of course, we're not paying anything for it, so um, they better be happy. But, you know, that is what it is. We're, we're okay with that. Um, just getting eyes on the product, getting people talking is going to be the most beneficial for us. Um, we'll have to see what the cost of this all is, but we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in finances later. So we got 90 minutes to book. Again, we're going to have to see how this 20 minute issue works. What counts as a, a smaller, uh, important match or not. Um, but we're going to have to worry about that as we run into it. Let's go ahead. Let's book our first resurrected Ring of Honor show on Friday, right before Rampage on HBO Max. I'll catch you guys on the flip. All right, guys, we are back. 95 minutes, which is the maximum we can get. We're pretty much going to do that probably every episode because it's very difficult to get some matches and some storylines done. But I think we did a really good job with this episode. <clears throat> now, we need only a 30. So we don't need a lot from HBO. But we definitely want to hit as hard as we can. I'm a little concerned that some of these matches may be, that are shorter may get penalized for being important or not. We're going to have to figure out really how that works and how we can work around it. Um, so with that said, let's look at our inaugural Ring of Honor wrestling show for our Resurrection Era. We start off pretty okay. Uh, like 43 for this is not too bad. We got Kerry Silken and William Regal coming to the ring. Uh, Kerry Silken sort of is an ambassador of the old Ring of Honor to the new. Come in, comes in and introduces the audience to their new general manager of Ring of Honor, William Regal. Regal comes down and thanks Silken for all his work. They two shake hands, and William Regal, the only way he can, says, Thank you, Mr. Silken. It's truly an honor. Uh, he then acknowledges that Silken's role in the company is the new Ring of Honor commissioner. So it seems like we have two authority leaders, general manager, who theoretically in storyline is going to be booking the show, and Carrie Silken, who's sort of the uh, authority figure, right? A commissioner is going to be the person that's going to decide ties and, and disputes and things like that. 
since we're, we're going to keep him around, um, and I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Regal then goes on to talk about Ring of Honor and what it means to him. He says, Ring of Honor is a great many things. Ring of Honor is about heritage. Ring of Honor is about respect. Ring of Honor, of course, is about honor. But it's also about the future. About the heroes of our sport that put themselves out there to challenge themselves, the challenge for greatness. Ring of Honor has made quite a many stars in its day, and under my care, that shall continue. And that is why we start our grand new journey the way only Ring of Honor can, with a tournament to determine the future of its great sport. So, with that, we introduce the bracket for the top prospects tournament. Um, so, the audience gets to see it, the wrestlers get to see it, um, and we're going to have a match tonight of it. So, that is sort of our, uh, our beginning of our show, introducing the changing of guard, the prospects for the future. It's okay if 43 is not bad. Because much better is uh, Samoa Joe comes out afterwards uh, to the adoration of the crowd. He showed up at the end of Supercard. Now, in this uh, save, we're not really acknowledging the title change or any of the stuff that happened at AEW. So this is sort of going to be the first time that he's really going to be back here and dealing with Ring of Honor. Um, so he comes in. He's got a mic. Uh, he addresses the crowd. He's welcomed back with a huge roar of the 300 people, 343 people that are there. Um, they're very appreciative that he is there. And he tells the audience, you know, it's been a wild journey. For years, I've dreamed about climbing, climbing to the top of the mountain, and I've de dedicated every waking minute to that dream. I've put my body through so much to achieve it. And you know what? I got there. But as I stood on the peak, I felt something. A longing for something more. Something greater than fame and money and prestige. He points down to the ring. Legacy isn't about where you are. It's about what you leave behind. I left this. And that haunts me. And I won't leave it again. This is home. This is where my legacy is built. Uh, so very pro Ring of Honor mantra. Joe, adored, uh, gets a big pop. That's pretty good. And would have thought it um, got the crowd hotter, but did not. Um, and we go on to probably the stinker of the night uh, in terms of matches. But I wanted to see what they can do. So. Um, we bring out Layla Hirsch and Maddie Rankinski. It's a terrible wrestling match with non-existent crowd of heat. Uh, it's a short one, five minutes by submission. Layla Hirsch beats Maddie. I wanted to see what they could do. Maddie is horrible. 16. Layla's not horrible. 44 is not too bad. Um, unfortunately, Todd Sinclair is not very good as a referee. We're going to up his refereeing game. They have him a little underscored. He shouldn't be getting a, especially a person that's been on television, shouldn't be getting a negative referee penalty. So we're going to have to make sure we fix that uh, in between saves. This is a 36. It's pretty underwhelming. But even that said, not horrible for our promotions. Just about average. Also, weirdly low rating for this. Um, I would have thought both of these guys would have hit this out of the park, but um, I'll have to take a look at that. Backstage, we have a segment of Joe Hendry, who's um, kind of been like negging Dalton Castle. They've Dalton Castle. They've had this tag team, and it's sort of this weird tenuous one where Joe Hendry. I don't know if this changed. As I've only followed it a little bit. But I'm keeping with that continuity, so I may be unaware that there was like a finally a falling out. But from the little bits that I recall of kind of following on and off in 2020, 
Castle in 2019, Castle being the the peacock, the most you know entertaining person in Ring of Honor, um, sort of got Joe Hendry here, who's an egomaniac who thinks he's the he's now the most entertaining. And Castle's the second, and they have this sort of tag team where Joe Hendry's just sort of shitting on Castle all the time. And it's always been like this kind of breakup potential. Um, I don't know if there was ever a conclusion to that, but we're kind of continuing that situation. Uh, but the two of them have a round one match together. They have to face each other. This, so this is going to be an issue for this tag team. And Hendry is kind of negging Dalton about this, of like, this is so unfair. This is not how we should do this. We can't let this break us up. This can't be an issue. Um, but he's kind of like insulting Castle on this. Like, this is going to be so embarrassing for you. I can't believe that. You know, that, that kind of thing. And and. Castle's like, well, you know, I, I can win. Uh, it's fine. Um, and Henry just kind of laughs it off and, and is continuing to kind of like nag and gaslight Dalton Castle. Um, Henry leaves, and we see visibly on the camera that Castle's clearly upset at Henry at being insulted. So we kind of build that. We hint at a face turn for Dalton Castle. Both of them are kind of healed right now. Um, so we kind of build that up. Uh, we have a exhibition match against Suzuki versus Cheeseburger. Again, I wanted to see, uh, this is almost actually an experiment to see it, what's considered an important match. Um, and apparently, so I, what I did, I deliberately picked somebody that was in the unimportant category and somebody that was in the star category to see if you could do a squash match. Because realistically, you should be able to. Um, oh. That sucks. Um, so th this is sort of the test, right? And clearly we're getting a penalty here because Suzuki's important and the match is too short. So that's kind of unfortunate because I would like to have shorter squash matches just to put people on and things like that. That said, the match still gets a pretty decent rating. It's just not as well as it could have gotten. Um, Suzuki beats Cheeseburger in submission. Unfortunately, he sustains a fractured cheekbone. That sucks. Uh, we're going to go look at medical and see what that puts him out for. That may change some booking options as well. Suzuki looked good, though. Got the crowd buzzing. Um, concerned about that injury. Yeah. We got FTR versus the Seidel brothers. Um, in a pretty good match. It's 16 minutes. Again, too short for... Uh, the audience, though I'm looking at this and I'm not that concerned about this negative anymore because, you know, we weren't going to get much higher than this, honestly, looking at this matchup, and, and we did pretty okay. It's not too bad. Um, so that's that's d manageable. I'm shocked that 16 minutes is considered too short for that, but that's fine. Um, FTR defeats Seidel Brothers. Uh, FTR are a tag champion, so they're sort of in an exhibition match, just fielding the crowd, um, showing their stuff. Uh, Matt, Mike Sedell was the weak link here, really struggling, but even then, he did 45. He's, he's doing fine. We put him up with the singles competitors in some other areas, and he's actually shining. Uh, um, that, that's actually pretty good. We do start our storyline, which kind of hints at what's about to come. Dem boys, too. No flips, just fister. Fister? Fister. Uh, <laughs> so... We got a good win with FTR. They are where they need to be. Ring of Honor champions, AAA champions, potentially future AEW champions. And they're out there fielding out the league and, and strutting their stuff. Afterwards, uh, we got Briscoes coming out. Uh, FTR celebrating their win, but they're interrupted by the sound of the Briscoes theme music. The announcers go wild. Rick of Bonnie's out there like, oh my god, I thought they were gone. It was a foregone conclusion that they were really left, but no, they're back. Jay and Mark come to the ring. Before they can even uh, get to the ring, they end up grabbing the tag belts off the timekeeper's table. Uh, that clearly visibly frustrates FTR. Um, and then Jay and Mark get into the ring. Jay grabs a mic, starts laying in the FTR. Because them boys are back. 
You thought you'd get rid of us that easy? Nah. We built this company. They're going to bury our bones in the back. For a year, people wanted us four in the ring. Who was the truly greatest tag team in the world? Well, that super card you guys won. Respect. But three seconds don't settle it. Three seconds is a mistake, a miscalculation. We ain't looking to miscalculate no more. Briscoe's FTR round two resurrection. We're coming back for our belts. And that's that. Them boys out as they kind of insult FTR with their mantra. And as they say that, J.M. Mark thrusts the belts back into the chest of uh, FTR, handing back uh, the belts, almost as a sign of like, listen, we decide where these belts are, and we acknowledge your win, but acknowledge that we control this destiny, right? It's a very kind of like aggressive move. Um, They stomp away. It's clearly been set. We know that we are moving into a rematch situation. Uh, This segment is okay. It's a 50. Hmm, interesting. Um, We had some match breakdown issues. Uh, The crowd was a little rowdy. We needed something to maybe cool them down a bit. Unfortunately, this technical match between Dalton Castle and Joe Hendry didn't quite do what it needed to do. So it suffered a little bit. Still ended up getting a 43. This is round part one of our uh, quarterfinals, or our round ones of the Top Prospects Tournament. Um, it's a decent match. Dalton Castle does defeat Joe Hendry. It's a quick roll-up after uh, a back-and-forth and a technical match between the tag team partners. Unfortunately, the crowd kind of gets burned by it. It's they're a little too rowdy for it. It's a little bit too slow. We needed something that maybe kind of cooled them down a little bit. Um, but that is unfortunate. Afterwards, we see that Castle sneaks a win, and Hendry is furious. Castle smirks at him. He's, he's real thrilled that he won. And he tries to offer the handshake, and Hendry stomps off and storms off backstage upset. Uh, we're clearly building up something between the two of them. Uh, you know, I'm surprised I don't have my storyline set for it. I must have forgot, but uh, we're clearly building up something between the two. The breakdown's happening. This segment underperforms, and i, I got to look at why, uh, what I had in them set as, because that, that shocks me. But I don't know if there's any dirt, dirt feet issues here. No. Uh, we got Samoa Joe working backstage as a road agent, too. It's almost like a cheat sheet. Uh, so good backstage. And then in our main event, we got Samoa Joe facing off against the former Ring of Honor world champion Bandito. Um, and it's a pretty good match. 20 minutes. Um, oh, yeah, I do have to... No, I mean, that's kind of how it's set up. Uh, Chava Guerrero and Bandito are on different sides of the face yield divide. They are. Um, Samoa Joe had a 55. Bandito had a 65, Segment got a 62, and uh, overall it's a pretty good match. Got the crowd hot, and had great wrestling and good heat. Smojo defeats Bandito in 20 minutes by pinfall, and uh, has a pretty good showing in the main event here at a 62, which will be great for us. Afterwards, after he defeats Bandito in a competitive matchup, uh, he shows his respect and shakes hands with him acknowledging the talent of Bandito and the work that he's put in to hold up the legacy of Ring of Honor. Um, As Bandito leaves the ring without incident, we hear some theme music and we see three members of the Foundation come out to the stage. We've got Rhett Titus, Hot Sauce Tracy Williams, and Jay Lethal. Lethal stands on the stage uh, and has a mic in his hand. Staring out through sunglasses, he's got that black machismo kind of look. Or, well, actually, probably more that Ric Flair style that he had at his peak. He's all ego at this point. Um, Rhett and Tracy start to walk around the ring. 
and it clearly has Joe on edge as he stands at the center. Um, he knows that Lethal's kind of snapped after the last pay-per-view, and he's kind of ready for anything. And Lethal, uh, Lethal does address him. He goes, Joe, Samoa freaking Joe. The debut that created shockwaves across the internet. My old mentor. My old friend, my old travel buddy. I like to say it's nice to see you in a ring of honor again. Pulls down his sunglasses and stares lasers into Samoa Joe with just evil intent in his eyes. But it absolutely is not. And with that, the Foundation attacked Joe from behind. Uh, he's not able to take on both of them and he gets... Uh, pretty beaten up. They kind of grab his arms and holds them outstretched, almost like in a crucifix as they kind of push him down to his knees and are holding him, uh, letting Jay Lethal get up close without fear of retribution. He takes off those glasses, stares him down deeper, still holding the mic in his other hand so we can kind of hear him, and he points down like Samoa Joe did in his intro and goes, this is mine, before blindsiding him with the metal end of the microphone across the forehead of Joe, levels out Joe, and the foundation walk off smug. It seems like Rhett Titus and Tracy Williams are aligned with Jay Lethal here on this. Curiously, no Jonathan Gresham in this. Um, so we have three of the four members, and a clear shot across the bow for Samoa Joe and Jay Lethal here, um, and we start a storyline involving him and have a segment rating of 44. So with our main event, I think we did, probably did pretty okay, probably like a 50-something. 50 57, that's not bad. We, we did lose some appeal because of the, the rival issues for our production value, but that's to be expected. Well above what HBO is expecting, and got us popularity boost in 38 regions. Couldn't ask for more. <sighs> so we got we to gotta look at this, this uh, Minoru Suzuki issue. <laughs> it's a Suzuki incident part two. It looks like he's okay, though. He's going to be injured, but taking a few weeks to fully heal. I think we just let him heal, um, and we'll be fine. Uh, we, we'll be okay here. Um, very uh, annoying, though. We go on to wrestling. The show went really well. Viewers said it was excellent. Um, Sheamus is retiring. What the hell? Well, good for him. Um, and then Rampage aired and uh, have way more viewers than in real life. Um, and our Scotty Too Hotty also retiring. A lot of changes going on in the world of wrestling and the save. Always exciting to see. Um, we do have some mail. So we do know Suzuki's injured. We had 402,000 viewers on HBO. That's really solid. I don't know what, our, what we get from that. Broadcast revenue was 25,000. Uh, sponsorship was 13,000. And um, yeah, so I mean, production costs are kind of baked in. I don't know what, it looks like we lost about 20 grand. We're going to lose maybe about 20 grand a show. Depends on what our pay-per-view revenue is going to be. We're not getting any ticket sales. Um, so that is unfortunate because of that. We might set it up to for the next show to just try to do very cheap and see how that massively impacts the amount of uh, people that show up. I, in general, would rather have more people show up than not. Um, because we do want to continue to grow this um, as quickly as possible. We basically have a year to get to, uh, I think it was 40 in four regions. So that definitely can be difficult because there is spillover. But uh, it means we're going to have to really play a delicate game. And it looks like the Tri-State, the Southwest, the Great Lakes. Southwest is a very interesting one that we have so much more popularly there. Um, you would think we would have a boost in New England 
but we're going to be focusing on the Mid-Atlantic, the Great Lakes, Tri-State, and I guess the Southwest. Those are going to be the four territories we're going to hop around. We're going to try to time our pay-per-views to be in those locations, and we're going to try to boost those up the best we can because we don't want to lose that HBO contract. Um, that said, we did pretty good. We didn't check our owner's goal, which we did get, and we should look at that before we end the show. So we need to, within two years, increase to medium. Okay. We can't hire any wrestler classes having a hardcore style. That's fine. And weirdly enough, we can't hire anyone whose class is a powerhouse uh, as a style. Not really a, a, a style that we would go for inherently. Kind of annoying. Uh, but that's fine. We can deal with it. We can handle that. All right, guys, that was episode one in the bag. Really happy with how that pay-per-view came out. Um, interesting to see, interested to see how the tournament shakes out. Uh, thankful that our first injury um, is just being worked through. We should be okay. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.